Hey, let us talk about history again. This time, about the history of the Roman Republic. Before diving into the main story, let us start with a little bit of etymology. Where does the name Rome come from? Well, there have been many guesses, but no one's really sure. Some think it could come from the Greek word "rome," meaning bravery or courage. Others link it to "rumon," an old name for the Tiber River. Then there are theories connecting it to the ancient words for hill or height, but the true origin remains a mystery. Now, onto the mythological origins of Rome. The city's name is famously tied to Romulus, a legendary hero. According to the myth, Romulus and his twin brother Remus were the sons of an Alban princess and Mars, the war gods. Through their mother, they were also said to be descendants of Aeneas, the Trojan prince. As babies, they were abandoned on the Tiber River, but were Miraculously saved and suckled by a she-wolf, then raised by a shepherd and his wife, the twins eventually avenged their family by restoring their grandfather to the throne of Alba Longa. They then set out to establish their own city, around what would later become Rome's Forum Vadium, a bustling river port connected in Roman myth to. Hercules, but a disagreement arose between the brothers, leading to Remus's death, either at the hands of Romulus or one of his supporters. Romulus went on to found the city of Rome, marking its boundary with a sacred bluffing ritual. Romulus opened Rome's doors to everyone, even criminals and runaway slaves, offering them asylum. And citizenship, to secure vice for his citizens, he hosted a festival, inviting neighboring tribes, and then abducting many of the women, leading to a war with the Sabines. After the dust settled, Romulus shared power with the Sabine king Titus Tatius. He also established the Roman Senate, picking a hundred noblemen to serve. As his advisory council, known as the Fathers or Atres, their descendants would become the patricians, the aristocratic class. Romulus also organized the population into groups for voting and military purposes, laying the groundwork for Rome's early political structure. And now on to the Roman Republic. The early days of the Roman Republic, before about 300 BC, are more legend than history, with scholars still debating how much is actually true. The Republic is said to have started in 509 BC, and by 500 BC, Rome had already allied with other Latin cities to fend off the Sabines. After winning the Battle of Lake Regillus. In 493 BC, Rome regained its dominance over Latium, which it had lost after the monarchy's fall. Rome's power solidified by 393 BC, after defeating various local tribes and conquering the nearby Etruscan city of Pei, making Rome the top city in the region. Rome also forged a treaty with Carthage. In 509 BC, defining their respective spheres of influence and regulating trades. Meanwhile, the Greek historian Heraclitus even described fourth-century Rome as a Greek city, which shows how interconnected the ancient world actually was. Rome's early enemies included neighboring hill tribes like the Volsci, the Aequi, and of course. The Etruscans, but as Rome's military successes grew, so did its territory, and it started facing new adversaries. 
or not your fiercest? What's the goals? A group of drivers from northern Europe, including parts of modern Italy, in 387 BC. The Gauls, led by Prenus, sacked and burned Rome after defeating the Roman army at the Battle of Alia. Prenus's forces later withdrew, and the Romans quickly rebuilt their city and went on the offensive. Conquering the Etruscans and taking land from the Gauls. By 290 BC, Rome controlled over half of the Italian peninsula. Throughout this time, Rome was almost constantly at war. In fact, the Temple of Janus, whose doors were open during wartime, was only closed twice during the Republic. Highlighting just how often Rome was at war. Amidst these never-ending wars, Rome faced a major internal crisis, known as the Conflict of the Orders. This was a political struggle between the plebeians, which would be the commoners, and the patricians, aristocrats. The plebeians sought political equality, leading to significant changes in the republic's constitution. The conflict began in 494 BC with the first plebeian succession, while the plebeians left the city in protest. This led to the creation of the office of plebeian tribune, giving them a voice in the government for the first time. Despite the traditional date of 509 BC for the Republic's founding, it took a few centuries for Rome to grow into the powerhouse we think of today. By the third century BC, Rome had become the dominant city on the Italian peninsula. The Punic Wars against Carthage between 264 and 146 BC. Were major turning points as Rome emerged as a Mediterranean superpower, acquiring its first overseas provinces, Sicily and Sardinia. As Rome expanded, it also became involved in the affairs of the Greek world, where the once mighty Hellenistic kingdoms were in decline. Admiring Greek culture, the Romans saw themselves as Natural allies of the Greeks and their civil strife, and before long, Rome's legions were called in to help. And within fifty years, all of Main and Greece was under Roman control. The Romans crushed the Macedonian phalanx in two major battles, and in 146 BC, they destroyed Corinth, marking the end of the Greek independence. In the same year, Rome also obliterated Carthage, turning it into a Roman province. Rome continued its conquests, moving into Spain and Asia Minor. By the late second century BC, the Republic faced a new threat: large groups of Germanic tribes, the Cimbri and Teutons, who invaded Italy. Gaius Marius, a military leader. Reformed the Roman army, defeated them in two decisive battles, securing Rome's northern borders. However, Rome's rapid expansion also brought new challenges. The republic's political system, with its annually elected magistrates and shared power, began to struggle under the pressure of governing an empire. The social war between Rome and its allies, along with a series of slave uprisings, highlighting these growing pains. Despite their eventual victory, Rome had to grant citizenship to its Italian allies, practically making all free inhabitants of Italy Roman citizens by the start of the first century A.D. And as the Republic grew. So did the ambitions of its leaders, meaning civil wars like the one led by Sulla, 
and the rise of powerful figures like Pompey and, of course, Gaius Julius Caesar, signal to republic's decline. And in 49 BC, Caesar famously crossed the Rubicon with his army, sparking a civil war that ended with him ruling Rome. After his assassination in 44 BC, the Senate's attempt to restore the Republic failed, leading to another power struggle between Kaiser's allies and his assassins. And of course, the final chapter of the Republic came in 31 BC, when Octavian, later Augustus, defeated Mark Antony at the Battle of Actium, with Octavian as the sole ruler. The Republic officially ended, giving way to the Roman Empire and the start of the Principate.